Shalom, 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 and welcome to another week of a light to the lost sheep of Israel. I'm your brother, Makadai Israel, and I'll be your host today. Uh, basically, today, uh, you know, last week I'm coming off of debunking uh, Hebrew Mormonism, the Book of Mormon, and Joseph Smith. Uh, we actually are going to do a part two to that, but this week we're going to shift gears a bit and we're going to talk about Gentile salvation through Israel. Okay. So through um, meditation and through prayer also, um, we went on and decided to uh, go ahead and, and come through with this subject because basically, just to give you a brief understanding, um, and you know what, before we do that, first, of, we got to give honor to Abi Yahweh. First and foremost, let's give all praise and honor to the almighty king of the heavens and the earth. Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So, uh, and also brothers and sisters, if you're new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe to this content. We are very, very adamant on bringing you absolute Bible truth. Um, uh, not affiliated with the uh, group called Absolute Bible Truth, but shout out to them brothers. Uh, that's brother uh, Josh and uh, all them brothers over there. Um, but we are basically... 100% into giving our brothers and sisters the absolute truth out of the scriptures, okay? And um, basically, that's why I want to go into this subject today, because a lot of times we are, again, and this is, if you go to and le read the description of this channel, you know, we have been so misled by doctrines of men, it's not even funny. It's it's, it's doctrines of men. So uh, I'm going to give you a brief understanding of why I chose this um, subject today. But before that, before I do that, let me um, let me change turn to uh, the book of Isaiah real quick. I'm going to read a scripture out of the book of Isaiah real quick, because this this scripture basically details perfectly of what I'm trying to say to you. This is what the prophet said. He said, wherefore, Yahweh said this is out of Yahweh's mouth. OK, the father for as much as these people draw near me. With their mouth and with their lips do honor me but they have removed their heart far far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men or basically that word precept means commands of men so basically you know the the fear and respect that people have for the almighty elohim okay is is taught by men taught by men uh in different religions different cults different sects and things like that. And I and I said this in a, in a video last week, brothers and sisters. And, and, and if you are a Gentile tuning in, please listen to this entire message before you have anything to say. Because basically you have been taught wrong. And I'm doing this so that you can really, really have a heart to understand. Like this is the real way on how me as a Gentile, how I can get into the kingdom of the almighty. Okay? I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to show you in the book. Okay. So pay, pay close attention, brothers and sisters. All right. So with that said, uh, let me give you a, a brief background and we're going to, and then we're going to begin a, a brief background on how this came to pass. Okay. Because a lot of times uh, I said this in another video, most, most cases, you know, uh, all throughout the week, uh, you know, I go into prayer when my brother Betzoel is with me, you know, we, we, we pray about these things and, and the almighty will, you know, reveal to us what it is that, you know, we're going to bring out. Okay. So we don't just sit around and say, you know what, let's do X, Y, and Z. You know, the subject can be on our mind, but we have to release it when it's according to the will of the almighty. Okay. So basically this had to be addressed because, all right, all throughout the week, a lot of times, um, you know, I'm in uh, different Hebrew groups, a few um, Hebrew Gentile groups, and, you know, we get into discussions about the word. And there was a particular post in one of the groups that I'm in, and basically my uh, notifications flooded out, so I can't really go to it to show you exactly what it is. But basically what it's saying is, it's saying basically that the, when it comes to the church, there's no such thing as black, white, red, or yellow church. 
All right. So long story short, because I don't want to waste a lot of time because you know how it is when you're bringing out scriptures and have to un you have to really unravel, you know, the meaning and, and the context behind things. But basically, my response was there is only one congregation in the entire Bible. There's only one. And that is the congregation of the children of Israel. All right. There's only one. And if you can prove me wrong, do it in the in, in the in the comments. There's only one. There's only one congregation that was given. All right. There was only one congregation that was established in the wilderness after my ancestors left Mitzrayim, Egypt. And all throughout the history of the so-called Old Testament, which we know is a stumbling block to our people because there's no such thing as the Old and New Testament. We have to come out of that. We have to walk away from that mindset. There's no such thing as Old and New Testament. Okay? That was that was given by a Gentile. And it was given so he could take you off of your, 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 your thought and, and separate you from the congregation of Israel. Think about it. When the apostles are going to witness to the Gentiles, they're trying to bring them to the fold. You can go into Romans 11 about being grafted into Israel, the congregation of Israel. We don't even really need to have this discussion, but because of religion and different denominations and everybody have different uh, beliefs and opinion, I have to do this so we can get some clarity on, you know, the true way that Gentiles can get salvation. And it's through Israel. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. The Mashiach is the one that gives salvation to the people, okay? His name is salvation. So don't misunderstand me there. Of course, we are the body of Yahshua. That is the congregation of the children of Israel, the body of Yahshua. All throughout the so-called Old Testament in the Torah and the prophets, you hear about the strangers cleaving to Israel. That's what I'm talking about. You hear about the strangers. So they take that word strangers and in the New Testament, so-called New Testament, they start using the word Gentiles. And there's two types of Gentiles. You got the Gentiles that were of the natural tree of Israel that were scattered and didn't know who they were, okay, or detached from the people. Then you got the Gentiles that are the different nations of people, okay? So basically what happened was with that post, there was a brother uh, who got on there and tried to refute me on that particular post. And I, I responded to him, you know, and gave him scripture and understand it. And basically what happened is last week when I did the video on debunking Hebrew Mormonism, he jumped in those comments and was talking about the same post from Facebook. So my thing is this. My brother, if you're watching, and make no mistake, usually I don't even do this when it comes to scoffers. I just keep it moving because what's the use? You know, the, the, the scriptures prophesize that there's going to be many scoffers, you know, in these last days. All right. But he followed me and basically I had to I had to do this. You know, let me give you a brief. Uh, a brief summary on what he was saying, and this is out of the comments on debunking Hebrew Mormonism. If, 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 if you want to uh, go and read this comment for yourself, it's on there. You'll see exactly the comment uh, and, and what it what is it saying and who is it from and all that stuff. All right, so this is what he said. He said, brother, with all due respect, where in the scriptures do you read that Gentiles must be saved by coming into the nation of Israel? See, I didn't say they must be saved, but you're going to receive salvation by cleaving to Israel by assimilating into the nation of Israel and um, doing the covenant, okay? And what I mean by doing the covenant, that's how I explain it, because there was a covenant made with uh, Yahweh and the children of Israel and their descendants and anyone that cleaves onto the covenant, okay? The covenant is eternal, okay? Now, we do understand that there was an older covenant that was given, and the scriptures say that it's waxing away, but it ain't waxed away yet. 
and is making way for the renewed covenant. And I'm about to show you something in the scriptures too. Yeshua said that the reward is going to be with him when he returns. Okay? So understand that. You know, salvation is Yeshua. Yeshua is salvation. But what did Yeshua say? I am not come but for the lost sheep of Israel. That is what he said out of his own mouth. Okay, brothers and sisters? All right, does that mean that Gentiles cannot get salvation? Absolutely not. But if you want salvation, you cannot do it through religion. You cannot do it through another man's understanding. Because as I brought out last week, and I'm going to reiterate it again, when it comes to religion, all religion is is idolatry. Okay, and I, and I hope you Gentiles and, and people from other nations and our brothers and sisters who don't know that they're Israelites Please tune in to the end of this. Listen to the scriptures and listen, listen to the, un, the uh, understanding that his brand brought out, okay, before you run off, okay? It's real easy to say, I don't want to listen to what Brother Macadai has to say and run back to your uh, pagan beliefs. That's real easy to do. What's, what's hard to do is to open up your heart and open up your ears and your eyes and your mind and really be uh, open to hearing subjective information that is actually true okay we study this day and night brothers and sisters we study the word day and night okay yahweh put that in my heart this is in my live brothers and sisters all right this ain't no so no surface uh scholarship here this is what he puts inside my ruach okay so that he can use me as a vessel to try to wake up my brothers and sisters who are lost to this idolatry okay what did the scripture I've read that brought out? It, it said that you, you 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 let me let me go to it to it to it again. Hold on, because I you know a lot of times you know people see that we're presenting this information and we know these scriptures by heart, but sometimes you're you're presenting and you don't want to make a mistake. But what did he say? He said, "Wherefore Yahweh said, for as much as these people draw near to me with their mouth and with their lips, they do honor me." but have removed their heart far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. See, men taught you how to fear Yahweh, how to how to respect his uh his commandments, his instructions. Okay? Men told you, okay, uh Yahweh said to, to keep the seventh day holy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. All right? But the but the uh who was it? Constantine and the Pope. All right, came along and they changed laws. And they told you no more don't don't keep that law no more. Instead, worship on Sunday. That's sun worship. Okay. Y'all know the Pope is into sun worship. Come on, y'all seen the the the, the big I, I, I what is called the uh, sun opolis or whatever it's called. That big sundial looking thing that he carries around, right? And then he has the crown too. Was that that's that, like a sun? And even Beyonce wore that outfit before. Come on, brothers and sisters, we got to wake up. All right. So let me finish reading this so we can go ahead and begin. So he said, where in the scriptures do you read that Gentiles must be saved by coming into the nation of Israel? This is not true. The most high God is not a respecter of the carnal flesh of men. Please do not mislead the people of God. The only fold, the only children of God are those that are in Jesus Christ by the spirit. And I'm reading it exactly how he typed it. Okay. So the only fold is Jesus Christ by the spirit. That's what he said. So again, you have to understand that the body of Yeshua is the, the children of Israel, the congregation of the children of Israel. But of course, through the um, precepts of men, they go into the uh, scriptures. They try to move uh, translations around certain words and try to mislead to, to give you the their doctrine. But understand, again, there's only one congregation in the, uh, in, in the entire um, Bible. There's only one congregation, and that congregation is the congregation of the children of Israel. So one thing real quick, I wasn't even going to bring the scripture out yet, but let me go into it. Um, but um, one thing I want to do before I bring the scripture out, because I'm going to respond to what he said, let's go to the book of Revelation. And I brought this out last week. We're going to go to the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 22. 
And this is what I was saying to you right here in uh, Revelation 22 and 12. It says, and behold, I come quickly. This is Yahshua talking. I turned the red letter on. One mistake that they did here in the um, blue letter Bible is verse 14 is also supposed to be in the blue letter. And I'll show you out of my book as well after I take it off the screen. He says this, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. What is that reward? It's the gift of the promise, brothers and sisters. It's, it's, it's the it's the gift of the, the promise that comes from after doing the things that we're supposed to do that are in the covenant. OK, so uh, that reward is the renewed covenant and the gift of eternal life in his kingdom. OK, so basically he's saying this verse 13. I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. See, that's who he is. He is the word of Yahweh. He is the beginning and the end. OK. All things was created by him, by the word of Yahweh. Okay, Yahweh, all he has to do is speak a thing and it comes into existence. Okay, so this is it right here, brothers and sisters. Look at this. Look at this. Well, let me go to the scripture right here on my other screen so I can move it up. All right, here we go. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Who is his commandments? That's Yahweh's commandments, his instructions that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. Remember what I just put, brought out, the gates of the city, okay? It's gonna play very, very important on what I'm, I'm about to bring out. So we gotta, when, we, when we're doing um, study, Bible study, brothers and sisters, you have to really remember things. You have to take notes. If you come to this channel, write these scriptures down, have a little notepad or a little journal and write these scriptures down so you can remember. Later on, you can go back and you can meditate on it. And that's how you start to remember scripture. Okay? So remember the gates of the city. Okay? So who's going to enter into the gates of the city? Those that are blessed, that are blessed enough. Those that do the commandments of the Father. Those are the ones that's going to enter into the city. Okay? This is the last chapter of the Bible, brothers and sisters. For without, those that are not going to get in, listen, are dogs. Sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters. That's a very, very important uh, word right there. And who are, whosoever loves and makes a lie. Okay, so we just we just talked about Constantine and the Pope, uh, the Roman Emperor Constantine, and basically how he created the uh, Catholic uh, Church back in 325 A.D. All right, you you can do the you can do the research and, and and you can you can pull this information up, brothers and sisters. All right, so this is somebody who loves and made a lie. Okay, a lie is something that is contrary to what the instructions of the Almighty brings out. Okay, and 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 of course, a lie is an untruth as well. But when it com comes to the um book, and it comes to you know the covenant and the way Yahweh wants us to live, that lie is Roman Catholicism, okay? And anything else that has sprang after that lot, okay? So I'll, we're bringing out the real way that you can enter into the kingdom, okay? So first first and foremost, as, as I'm about to bring out this next scripture and, and answer this, uh, this scoffer that was on the page, one thing that I've noticed in my walk when it comes to Gentiles is Gentiles don't understand prophecy. They don't understand the law and the prophets. They don't understand uh, the covenant and who it's with. They don't understand the uh, promise and who's the promise with. And they don't understand who Israel is today. So again, that's prophecy, the law and the prophets, the covenant, the promise, and who Israel are today. As Gentiles, y'all just do not understand those things. And it really makes things really, really difficult for you to have a grasp, under, a keen understanding and grasp the uh, whole context of the Bible. The entire Bible is about the congregation of Israel and their covenant with the Almighty. And, and, and it goes into how they, they uh, transgressed the covenant and went into captivity many, many, many times. Captivity means slavery, many, many times, okay? They are in captivity today. Okay, there's no way we can believe that the people that are over in the land right now are the people 
Because if they are the true people, they're supposed to go back into captivity because those people transgress Yahweh's laws on the daily. Okay? It's one of the most violent countries on the face of this on the face of this earth. Okay. Look at what's going on. And, and I don't want to go into this real, you know what? Matter of fact, I ain't even gonna go. I was gonna bring up the Whoopi Goldberg incident. But I got information on my IG page. My IG page, for those who don't know, is at the bottom of my screen. Go to my page, and I brought out some information on that. So we ain't going to waste our time going into the um, Whoopi Goldberg. But uh, see, this is what happens when you change your name to Goldberg and try to be like them people. They are already uh, trying to be like you, you know, the true Hebrew Israelites, the ancient people. But now you're trying to be like them. And see what happens? That's all I got to say about that. So let me... uh switch gears and let me go to romans 9 real quick i was gonna bring this out later but i'm gonna bring it out right now romans chapter 9 all right you know as you you as gentiles you uh you love uh elder paul so we're gonna go to shaul right now all right all right so let's 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 read again what he said he said this the most high god is not a respecter of the carnal flesh of men ain't that what he said Please do not mislead the people of God. How I mislead the people of your so-called God? I didn't mislead the people of the almighty Yahweh because in order to uh, mislead the people, I got to tell them lies. I didn't tell them lies. I put the scriptures up on the, script, on the screen and we talk about it. All right. So this is what he says. I say in truth, in Mashiach, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Ruach HaKodesh that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. OK, this is this is weighing down on Elder Shaul. OK, for I could wish that myself was a curse from Mashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. What did he just say? He said that do not mislead the people. The most high God is not a respecter of the carnal flesh of men. But here we see Elder Shaul telling you that he wished that he could be a curse from Mashiach for his brother, his brother's that are our kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites to whom pertains what the adoption and the glory and the covenants plural and the given of the instructions and the service of Yahweh and the promises all right let me go up a little bit more whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh the Mashiach came, who is over all, Yah blessed forever. So be it. That's what that word amen mean. So brother, right here, you just got debunked. And in the Hebrew Israelite uh, community, we call that a cut. Now I don't have no sound effects or nothing like that. But you just got sliced. Because right here, Elder Shaul said that he wished that he could be accursed from Mashiach for his brother according to the flesh, who are Israelites. And with the Israelites, it pertains the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the instructions of Yahweh, and the service of Yahweh, the promises, and whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Mashiach came. As I, as I brought out, the Mashiach said he was sent. He only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All right? He was sent there by the almighty Yahweh. To gather the lost sheep, because at this time in this Roman cap captivity, only Judah is present in the land. And the brothers from the 10 tribes, as I just brought out a couple weeks ago, are scattered everywhere in all different um, nations. We, we just brought that out last week. All right. According to Isaiah chapter 11. And I went into their books, the people who claim to be Yahudim and are not. We went into their books and showed that the 10 tribes are in Africa. All right. Brought that out last week as well. So if you want to tune in, go, go, go ahead and tune into the video from last week on Hebrew Mormonism. I brought it out in that, in that, in that uh, study. All right. So right here, the brother is cut. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and move on. All right. And we're going to go ahead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into prophecy because like I brought out, we really uh, as as people coming out of the church we don't understand prophecy
So I'm going to go into the prophecy and that's going to show you uh, basically, you know, how a Gentile can actually get into the kingdom. All right. So do I want to bring out any more things that he said? Let me let me go in. He, he brought some scriptures out. We ain't even going to go. It's basically I'm doing a Christian sh shuffle here, you know, going into Galatians, Romans, Romans 9 and 8. Um, he said in Romans 9, and 8, he said that is. They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Uh, then he put in parentheses, the promises by faith as it was for Abraham. And ben, then he goes on um, basically to say the matter of being a Jew was addressed by the early follower of Yeshua Hamashiach in 50 AD. It was addressed at the Jerusalem Council. The council made it clear that no man needs to become a Jew. No, no man needs to be circumcised and no one needs to do anything other than um, coming to faith in Christ. All right. And basically he's saying that the council decided that Gentile converts to Christianity were not obligated to keep any other specific rituals, including the rules concerning circumcision of men. First off, um, basically Christianity wasn't in existence at this time. So that's another cut right there. See, this is why it takes not only a uh, study of the scriptures, you have to study history. You have to study exactly what you're bringing out. So look, this is how you study. Brothers and sisters, pay attention. When you study in scripture, first and foremost, you got to understand who the audience is that the scripture is being presented to. Okay, nine times out of ten, it's to the Israelites. But, you know, yeah, Paul, uh, Elder Paul was sent to the Gentiles. So he might be talking to Gentiles at the time or right, in some of the uh, epistles and the letters. All right, so you got to understand who the audience is. Number two, you have to understand the uh, historical, uh, cultural context, okay, of the people, how they lived, you know, what they wore. You got to understand the climate. You got to understand the geography of the land. You got to understand where they were going, where is certain places like Galilee, where is Samaria at, where is Jerusalem at. You got to understand the geography as well. You got to also understand, you know, the time period. What, was they under a captivity? Were they on, only in the land? And, and, you know, where are the Israelites at the time? You know, you got to understand that. You know, these are the things you really have to understand. And you got to put it all together. And then you then you get a keen understanding of the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand prophecy. Okay, that's another big one. You really got to understand prophecy. Because if you don't understand prophecy, then you're going to be misled by these religions. All right? So he cut himself by saying... Christianity. Basically, what he's going into is he. Let me turn to it real quick. All right. And it's not even part of the uh, lesson, but I'm going to turn to it just so I can address it real quick. All right. So basically, what happened um, in the book of Romans 11? And let me turn to it myself in my book because I like to have my notes with me. All right. So basically, uh, in Romans 9. Um, oh, excuse me. It wasn't Romans 11. It's Acts 11. Sorry about that, brothers and sisters. It's Acts 11. But anyway, what I was bringing out in Romans um, uh, 9 and, and, and then going to Romans 11, we know that um, basically you tell you that he tells you who the covenant's with, who the adoption with, and the promises. And then he goes into uh, Romans 11 and tell you, that Gentiles can be grafted into the natural branches, but you got to be careful and not boast against the natural branches, okay? Because it's only because of the fall of, of certain Israelites, not the entire people, okay? But because uh, when we transgress as a nation, we have to pay the penalty as a nation. But this doesn't go for every single Israelite that we all going to be cut off, all right? It's because of the fall of Israelites that Gentiles are being grafted into the natural branches, okay? You're getting grant. It's, it's basically a gift, all right. So don't boast against the ones who made it possible for you to be grafted in to the to the uh, natural branches, which is the congregation of the children of Israel. All right. So let's go to Acts real quick, so so I can give you a little bit of uh, understanding, because this this brother here, he he doesn't understand, and I don't want to beat up the brother, because we all been there. I've been there too. I had a misunderstanding of scripture as well. You know, coming out of uh, the Baptist church, and uh, basically, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this real short and sweet. All right. So, 
basically what happened is, you know, the Israelites were basically uh, the elders, Paul, Peter, um, James. They were all basically having a discussion over, you know, uh, newly uh, awakened uh, Gentiles that are coming into the fold. OK, and basically the, the context of Acts chapter 15 is that when Gentiles come into the fold, you don't want to put too much on them at one time. All right. They just they're just waking up to the truth. You know, you can't put every single law on them at once. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is basically what what, what the context is right here. So I'm going to skip a lot of it, but let's go down to. Wait a minute. I'm in 11. I'm supposed to be in 15. Let me go to 15. Let me fix that. 12, 13, 14. Let's go to 15. All right. 15. Got it. So let's go down to around verse. Let me go down to verse 19. All right. And this is what I'm saying right here. So basically what uh, they decided and it's right here in verse um, 19. He's saying, Wherefore, my judgment or my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to Yahweh. All right? So they don't want to trouble them. They don't want to put too much on them. So he's saying, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. Stay away from idolatry. Stay away from idols. Stay away from anything other than the covenant of Yahweh and the children of Israel and what we bring out. Okay. Abstain from the pollution of idols and from fornication. Don't go around fornicating. I uh, have an unclean sex acts. All right. And from things strangled and from blood. Okay. These are all in the Torah. The instructions of the almighty. So for all y'all who think that the law is done away with right here, this is a cut to that. And this is the, this is the whole understanding right here. Verse 21, for Moses, we know Moses was the lawgiver through, uh, well, Yahweh is the lawgiver, but Moses was the vessel that Yahweh used to bring the instructions to the children of Israel. So this is the, this is the understanding. For Moses of old time has in every city them that preach him. Every city you go to, they preach the instructions of the almighty, okay? Being read in the synagogues every sabbath day all right so and see that's why i said you have to understand the culture of the people okay we don't have to prove to you that we're supposed to keep the shabbat it's a cultural thing we do it automatically because that's part of our culture so if you are a gentile that want to assimilate into the culture of israel you have to keep the sabbath day you have to okay don't let nobody tell you going back to what you you, you understand from because of the precepts of men Okay, that 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 the uh, Sabbath is done away with, and that you do Sunday worship. That's a lie. You're not supposed to do that. That's a sin. Okay, right here for Moses of old time has in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. All right, so brother, you you've been cut, sliced, dismissed, rolled into the carpet. I ain't even really got to say anything else more than that. We're gonna go ahead and and, and get with this um study. So we can get rolling on it. All right. So we're going to go to the uh, prophecy. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Chapter 21. All right. I'm going to go to Revelation 21. And I'm going to read. Let's go. Let's go ahead. Let me make this big for you. We're going to go ahead and start here. Um, and we're going to read down to 12. Because I basically want to give you some understanding of the prophecy of the uh, of the kingdom and this is yahshua's kingdom here that we're talking about because um if you don't know because christianity taught a lot of us wrong um after see you know when i was in the church we believed that once you die you automatically go straight to heaven all right but that's not true you know when you die you have to have the judgment that's what the book of hebrews say after you after you die then there's the judgment all right. Um, after the judgment, if you are blessed to enter into the kingdom, it's Yahshua's kingdom first. It's a 1000 year reign first. OK, that's all in the book. That's all in the book. 
All right, so we're going to bring some of this stuff out. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead and bring this out. Like Again, we're going to read down to uh, verse 12. And it reads, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. I, John, or Yachanan in the Hebrew, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, so this is a prophecy. This is a vision that he's seen. He was in the Ruach HaKodesh, or what the world calls the Holy Spirit, and he saw this, okay? And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Elohim himself shall be with them and be their Elohim. What a beautiful thing this is. Hallelujah. That is because, let's go to the beginning. Okay, in the beginning of the book, Abi Yahweh stopped, stopped dwelling himself to be with men because of sin. But now we see in the kingdom, this is what Yahweh wants to do. He himself, he wants to be with us. Okay, verse four, and Yahweh shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain but the former things are passed away. Hallelujah. The former things of our affliction are passed away. See, the whole idea of being saved means to be, and I brought this out in another study. The whole idea of being saved means to be saved from your conditions, being saved from being oppressed and afflicted and, and treated how we are. You know, we are thrown in their prison houses. You know how many Israelites there are in the, in the prisons over here? Their prisons are filled with Israelites, you know? Yahshua has been elected to wipe away the tears of those that mourn, okay? That are that are hold up in these in these cap hold up as captives in these prisons, okay? That's part of the good news. Come on, brothers and sisters. And he that sat on the throne said, "Behold, I make all things new." And he said unto me, "Write for these words are true and faithful." Okay? Let me scroll up. And he said unto me, it is done. I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his Elohim and he shall be my son. So how do you overcome? You got to overcome this world. This world brings everything against us. This world brings everything to, to, to take you off the path of the almighty through entertainment, through uh, political uh, arenas, through uh, social networking. It's just, it's, it's so much things and devices that Shaitan uses to throw you off the path. That's why, you know, in order to overcome, you got to overcome this world. So if you love this world, you cannot be in the kingdom. You can't love two masters, okay? You can't love the, uh, the Mashiach and Yahweh, and then turn around and say you and, and, and love the world, you know, always lusting to be like the world, always trying to assimilate into the culture of the world, okay, trying to be like them, trying to be like their governments, you know, having more faith in the government than you do to the almighty, so you, you, you cannot get salvation that way, all right, let's read up, but the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay, these are the people that cannot enter into the kingdom. If you if you have fear, okay, fear in your heart because you don't trust the, uh, the almighty. You fear the, the Omicron or you fear uh, anything that's coming your way because you lack faith in the almighty, you can't, you can't, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. If you don't believe in Yahweh and his Mashiach, you got to believe in them both. You can't just believe in, in Yahweh and don't believe that he sent his son. You got to believe in them both or you cannot enter into the kingdom. The abominable, those that lay with beasts, those that lay with the same sex, those that, you know, do abominable practices. According to this, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
You know, nowadays, everybody has to be accepted, you know? And then if you believe in the Bible, then you, you know, you're, you, you, you're the old way, you know? They, they frown on people who, who believe in the Bible nowadays. Of course, a murderer, a murderer cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters. That's why I said, you know, start relating that word religion with idolatry. It's the same exact thing. Okay. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talk with me saying, come hither. I will show you, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. All right, here we go. This is new, new Jerusalem coming down. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from Elohim, having the glory of Yahweh and her light was like unto a stone most precious, like a jasper, a jasper stone, excuse me, clear as crystal. And here it is, brothers and sisters. Remember I told y'all, remember gates? Remember the gates? All right, here we go. And, I'm, and I still want you to remember uh, about the gates. And I had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And at the 12 gates, 12 angels. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. This is the congregation of Israel. This is how we get in. We got to go through the gates. Okay, what tribe are you part of? That's the gate that you go through. So my question to you as a Gentile, let me take this down for a second. My question to you as a Gentile is what gate do you go through if you are, if, if you are in Catholicism? Because there is nothing in the Bible that say if you're a Catholic, this is the gate that you go through. Or if you're a Mormon. What gate do you go to? If you're a Muslim, what gate do you go through? This is a question. If you are a Baptist or a Methodist or a uh, what is it? What is they called? Episcopalian. If you are um, um, holiness, all these different uh, denominations and all these different uh, trains of thoughts, schools of thoughts. What gate are you going to go through? All right. According to the Word, according to the Bible. It says that you must go through one of the 12 gates that has the names of the 12 tribes of Israel on it. And we're about to dive into this a little bit more deeper. And like I said, I brought out this too. And I said, when I uh, did the screen like this, I will show you in my Bible. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. So if you can see right here, that's the scripture right here. Verse 14. Mine is highlighted, but you see that the writing is red. That is the Mashiach talking. That is Yeshua HaMashiach talking. And he's talking about his father's instruction. See, uh, the Christian church to tell you that, you know, Christ has his own commandments. But that's not true. Yeshua HaMashiach came to bring you the instructions of the Almighty. And anything that he said in that so-called New Testament is the words of Yahweh. You have to understand that. So the words of Yahweh is the entire book. The word of Yahweh. Yeshua said that he is written in the volume of the book. He is the word of Yahweh. The entire book is about him. Come on now. Think, brothers and sisters. Think. All right. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and begin here in the prophecy in the book of Ezekiel. Let me turn to it. Ezekiel chapter 47. All right. And for those who don't know anything about Ezekiel 47, or Ezekiel 47 is a prophecy where it's going into the times of the third temple in Yahshua's kingdom. Okay. So if, if your church, your organization never told you about this, I, I, I got to be honest with you. I can't sit under a church or organization. That's not teaching me about prophecy because all this stuff is playing out right now and it is coming to a full and it is coming at us. All right, brothers and sisters. So we're going to start right here. And I, I usually when I'm reading out of Ezekiel, I usually use another Torah, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read out of this one today. All right, let's go down. We're going to go down to let me put it back on the screen. We're going to start here at Ezekiel 47 and 22. Let me get it big for you. 
All right, so Ezekiel 47 and 22 reads, And it shall come to pass that you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you. So right here, we're we going into um, the actual land of New Jerusalem. Um, we're going into that land, and this is basically how the land is going to be divided and all that stuff. So it says, And it shall come to, come to pass that you shall divide it by a lot for an inheritance unto you and to the strangers, brothers and sisters, that's the Gentiles, that sojourn among you, which shall beget children among you, and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger sojourns, there shall you give him his inheritance, saith Yahweh Elohim. Okay. I could actually stop the study right here. This is Gentile salvation through Israel. This is what I'm talking about. Again, I didn't say that it's the Israelites that give Gentile salvation. But in order for you to receive salvation, you have to go through Israel as a Gentile. We just read it right here. And it shall come to pass that it in what tribe the children, oh, excuse me, the stranger, sojourn. So whatever tribe you as a, a Gentile sojourn, and the children of Israel, there shall you give him his inheritance, says Yahweh. So you want your inheritance? You have to do it through Israel. Now, if you don't know who the people are, how are you going to get your inheritance? Huh? How are you going to get your inheritance? You don't even know who the people are. You don't even know who, who the right people to bless are. You know? You, you got to bless Abraham's seed. Isaac's seed. Jacob's seed. How are you going to bless the children of Israel and you don't even know who they are? Or you, you continuously turn your face against the children of Israel because you don't like our skin color. Because in your heart, you don't believe we are the children of Israel. And brothers and sisters, um, y'all will, and hopefully I don't forget, I want to go into another curse that's on the children of Israel today. You know, I started it. I skipped last week because I wanted to fully focus on the Book of Mormon and debunking that. But, um, yeah, we're going to bring out another curse. And that's how you know who the children of Israel are because of the church, the, because of the curses and where they scatter today. We went again. We went into that last week in a, in, in a, in a um, Book of Mormon discussion. OK, let's go ahead and move on so I can keep on flowing with this. Let me look at the time. All right. Let's keep on moving. Uh, let's go to the next chapter. We're going to go to Ezekiel 48. I got to tell you, brothers and sisters, I love the book of Ezekiel. This prophet, I mean, so much was revealed to him by Yahweh. Hallelujah. He, he brings out a lot of information. Okay. One of my uh, favorites out of the uh, major prophets, of course, everybody's favorite is, is, is Isaiah, but out of the major prophets, I really love reading and studying out of the book of Ezekiel. It, it, it is really true truly a, a heaven sent gem that Yahweh gave us. Uh, and, and, you know, then he say he would leave a comforter with us. So when you have the Ruach HaKodesh upon you and you, and you reading this and you putting yourself into the scriptures, it, it just makes you feel good. Okay. It really comforts you. That's how the comforter work. It's not the actual book. That's the comforter, which certain people believe, certain people believe certain camps. Shout out to my camp brothers. Certain camps believe that the Bible is the Holy Spirit. Come on now, brothers and sisters. Come on now. All right, let's go ahead and, and, and move on. All right, so I'm going to go to, let's go down to verse, looks like verse 11. I'm, something I want to bring out in verse 11. All right, let me make this big for you. I'm going to bring this out in verse 11. Then I'm going to skip down. To verse 19. All right. It shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, which keep my charge, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray as the Levites went astray. So basically, this is telling you that in the kingdom, uh, in Yahshua's kingdom, listen, brothers and sisters, 
For all y'all who think the law is done away with, the law is not done away with. The sacrifice is on hold, yes, because we don't have a temple. It was destroyed. But as soon as the third temple I get up, and you can read in these chapters, you see that the sons of Zadok are going to resume the priesthood and be sacrificing animals for sin. Because at this time, Yahshua is going to be the king. He is going to be sitting on the throne. He is no longer going to be atoning for our sins. He's going to be the king. That is going to be his office and his kingdom. And the Z Zadok, the priest, the priesthood, they're going to, their office is going to be atoning for sins. And the only way to atone for sins is through the blood of animals in the, in the kingdom of Yahshua, because sin will be there. Okay. Uh, and verse, let's go down to verse 19. Verse 19. And they shall serve the city. Excuse me. They that serve the city shall serve it out of all the tribes of Israel. See, it goes back to the title of what I'm saying. Gentile salvation is through Israel. And they that serve the city. So if you're a Gentile and you want to serve the city, you want to serve Yahweh, you want to serve New Jerusalem, you want to serve Yeshua, you have to do it out of all the tribes of Israel. Okay? This is it's, it's in the book. It's in the book, brothers and sisters. Come on now. All right, let's go down to verse 31. All right, so this is going back into the city gates. All right, we're going back into the gates again. All right, so look, I'm going to read 31 to 35. And it reads, and the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Didn't we just read that? This is in the Old Testament, the so-called Old Testament. Didn't we just read about that in the New Testament? All you brothers and sisters, that's Tanakh only. You read right here that it's the same. It's mirroring the, the so-called uh, New Testament. All right, that's all the uh, good news in the uh, epistle does is it mirrors the same things that's in the uh, in the Tanakh, in the uh, Torah and the prophets. It's, it's, they go hand in hand. It's the same thing. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tri tribes of Israel. Three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Yehuda, and one gate of Levi. Okay. And at the east side, 4,500 and three gates, and one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, and one gate of Dan. Okay, this is another thing I want to talk about real quick, briefly. Uh, it's a lot of brothers that's out here teaching that the tribe of Dan is going to be completely cut off, and that because Dan' um, name isn't written as of of the twelve, one of the twelve thousand of the one hundred forty four thousand, that he's not going to be in the kingdom. Right here, one of the gates is Dan. Dan is going to be in the kingdom. He is going to get an allotment of, of a land for his people. Okay, we know that Dan went astray. The, the tribe of Jan, Dan went astray. And they have transgressed Abba Yahweh's instructions. But a goal, of course, again, it doesn't mean that every last person from the tribe of Dan is going to be cut off. No, no, no. They have descendants that still living today. We through oral tradition, we have brothers and sisters that's over there in the land of Africa that's just part of the tribe of Dan. You know, they're not getting completely cut off, okay? As we read it right here. Let's read further down. And at the south gate side, 4,500 measures and three gates, one gate of Simeon, one gate of Ishakar, and one gate of Zebulun. And the west side, 4,500, with their gates, one gate for Gad, one gate for Asher, one gate for Natali. It was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be Yahweh is there. Not the Lord, okay? It's going to be in Hebrew. Yahweh is there. yod Hey wah Hey. okay? The great I am is going to be there, okay? So now what I want to do is, so we, we already established that in the kingdom, it's going to hit. The, you see the gates, and these are the gates, um, basically in, in uh, New Jerusalem, right? Um, and, and and basically, also we see that all the tribes of Israel are there. You know, now you see that um, you know Joseph was split up into two: half Manasseh and uh, half Ephraim, but he's going to be consolidated back to one tribe. Okay. Um, let's go to Ezekiel 43. All right. Let me type it in. We're going to go to Ezekiel 43. 
And I'm going to start right here around 11. It's something I want to bring out for you. All right. And this is our, uh, we're still in the law and the prophets, okay? Something like I, I brought out at the beginning of this uh, study, a lot of Gentiles don't understand prophecy. They don't understand the law. They don't understand the prophets. They don't understand the covenant. They don't understand the promise and they don't understand who Israel is today. But hopefully after this study, you're going to have a, a better understanding of all this stuff here. OK, so right here, we're going to read right here in 43, 11 and 12. And it reads and let me let me make it a little bigger, a little bit bigger for me, Mr. Blind Man. Let me make it a little bigger. All right. So. I think that's pretty big. All right, for Mr. Blind Man, Brother Macadai Israel. All right. And they, and if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof and the going out thereof and the coming in thereof and all the forms thereof and all the ordinance thereof and all the forms thereof and all the instructions or the laws thereof and write it in their sights that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the ordinance thereof and do them. See, right here, verse 14, uh, verse 12. This is the Torah or the instructions of the house upon the top of the mountain. And, and, and anybody who don't understand, the mountain is the government of Yahweh, okay? That's Yahshua's mountain, okay? Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Or Kodesh, behold, this is the Torah of the house. So this is this is for the whole mountain, okay? The whole government of Yahshua. This is his ordinances. This is his Torah. This is his law, okay? Just like we come into the government here, the mountain of uh, America, you know, they have laws, they have statutes, they have commandments here as well that we have to abide by. It's real easy for man to abide to abide by the government. And what they say for us to do, you know, we get a lot of fear in our heart when it comes to keeping the, the commandments of uh, the, the government here. But when it comes to Yahweh's commandments through his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, we start to freeze up and we start to freak out because people don't want to do what uh, Abi Yahweh commands because they ultimately it's a respect factor and it's a fear factor. You don't you don't respect and you don't fear him. So you don't want to do what he instructs us to do. That's basically what it is. And that's how he looks at it as well. Because if you don't keep his commandments and according to the uh, context of the Torah, then basically you hate him. OK, those that don't do the instructions of the almighty hate him. So y'all better start reading this scripture and come and come back to the truth and start understanding what it is that you're obligated to do. If you want this salvation, you better start turning to him. Let's get back to the scriptures. All right. So I've read 11 and 12 here and we see that the, the Torah. Is, is, is established in the mountain of Yahweh. Okay. We see that here. All right. So let me, um, let me go to 44. Now we're still in a prophecy. Okay. All right. Let me go to five. Make it a little bigger for you. All right. And we're going to read down from five to nine. All right. And Yahweh said unto me, son of man, this is still the vision that he gave to Ezekiel, okay, in the Ruach HaKodesh. Again, just like he gave it to Yachanan. And that's, that was another prophet that came thousands of years later, all right? Uh, and, Yah and Yahweh said unto me, son of man, mark well and behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears all that I say unto you concerning all the ordinances of the house of Yahweh and all the laws thereof and mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. So right now we're talking about the temple of Yahweh. And you shall say to the rebellious, okay, this is the rebellious. These are the people who don't want to keep the commandments of Yahweh. See, that's not going to happen in Yahweh's kingdom, in Yahshua's kingdom. It's not, it definitely ain't going to happen in Yahweh's kingdom, but we're talking about Yahshua's kingdom now. It's not going to happen. All right. You can't come with that mindset that the laws is done away with. The laws are in full effect. And you shall say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, thus saith Yahweh Elohim, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you 
of all your abominations and that you have brought into my sanctuary strangers uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in the flesh to be in my sanctuary to pollute it. What did that brother say? It's not in the flesh. Ain't that what he said? He talked about how, you know, the, the apostles was teaching against the uh, circumcision and all that stuff. Basically, that's what he was saying. Let me pull it up one more time, what he was saying. Let me pull it up for you one more time. The council decided that Gentile converts to Christianity. No, this is not Christianity right here. What do you read? The house of Israel. We're not obligated to keep any other specific rituals, including the rules concerning circumcision of men. Then he didn't, didn't you hear what he just said, right? But what is this saying? And that you have this is an abomination, and that you have brought into my sanctuary strangers, that's the Gentiles, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary to pollute it. Even my house, when you offer my bread, the fat and the blood, these are the, these are the offerings and the sacrifices, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. When you don't get a circumcised, so you don't get circumcised in the flesh, and you're trying to enter into the kingdom, into the uh, temple, you have broken the covenant of Yahweh because it is a everlasting covenant to get circumcised in the flesh, and it's representative of being circumcised in the heart. So you have to do both as a man. And as a woman, you have to circumcise your heart and keep the instructions of Yahweh in faith, okay? Let's not forget, you have to have faith, okay? And we're gonna bring that out as well. Let's read down, we're going to um, verse nine. And you have not kept my, the charge of mine holy things, but you have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. So again, Gentile salvation is only through Israel, all right? And if you're not uncircumcised in the heart or uncircumcised in the flesh, you shall not enter into the kingdom of Yahweh, into his sanctuary, okay? Or be among the children of Israel, all right? This is your second chance. You make it to the uh, Yahshua's kingdom, this is your second chance, uh, Gentiles. This is your second chance at the, the hope of eternal life, okay? That is the promise that was given to the Israelites. We brought that out in Romans 9. Come on now. I'm going to both the so-called Old Testament and the so-called New Testament. It's in both. Come on, we got to pay attention to this, all right? Let's go to uh, further down. Where am I at here? I'm at uh, verse 9. So let's go go further down. And brothers and sisters, man, we got to read, man. We got to read. We got to really study this. All right, let's, let's go into some of the ordinances of the um, Levites. All right, I'm just going to read two um, verses for you real quick. But the priests, the Levites, the son of Zadok, that keep the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith Yahweh Elohim. They shall enter into my sanctuary and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me and they shall keep my charge. Hallelujah. All right. So we see the priesthood is being set up again. Let's go down further to um, verse 23. All right. We're going to read verse 23 and 24. All right. Verse 23. Let me go up further. Verse 23. Verse 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane. Okay? So it's the Levites through the um, sons of Zadok that is going to teach. They're going to be ministering the word of Yahweh. They're going to be teaching. This is what they're going to be teaching. They're going to be teaching at the uh, at the temple. All right? That's where the teaching was done. Didn't Yahshua get up on the Shabbat and teach at the temple? All right? This is what they're going to do. They're going to teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. See, the the, the, uh, the religions today are teaching our people it's okay to do unclean acts. 
to do things that uh, are contrary to the instruction of Yahweh, to eat uh, swine and eat uh, shellfish and crab and all that, to dress like, if you're a man, dress like a woman, or if you're a man, lay with a man. That's okay. If you're a woman, lay with a woman. Okay, that is unnatural in the sight of all the Almighty, and it is not going to be allowed in his kingdom. Okay? There's so many things, and I'm not picking on the LGBT key community. I think I said that right. I'm not picking on nobody. I'm just speaking absolute Bible truth here, all right? And in the absolute Bible truth is nothing unclean is going to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh, all right? Verse 24, and in controversy, they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my judgments, and they shall keep my laws, my statutes, and all mine assemblies, and they shall hollow my Sabbaths. Brothers and sisters, this is future prophecy right here, okay? If you believe in the Bible, then you have to turn away from what you're a part of right now, and you have to start keeping these instructions of Yahweh, and you have to start keeping his Shabbats. You have to, or, 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 or else you're basically unclean, and you're going to have a really hard time at judgment. I am not Yahweh. I am not Yahshua. I can't say what they are going to decide in your judgment, but all I'm saying is, you better start keeping these instructions and doing what he's telling us to do in faith so that you may have a shot at the kingdom. See, see, Hebrew Israelites, we don't believe that we're already saved. Now, a lot of us was taught in the Christian church that we're already saved once we accept the name Jesus Christ. That ain't true. You're not saved until after you are saved by the almighty through his judgment. You know, I, I, I don't understand it. OK, I don't understand this, this way that we live. We live as if we're already saved. We don't have to do what the Bible commands us to do uh, through the spirit. Um, Yahweh's mind, his instructions. We don't have to do that. We don't have to do that anymore because we were taught the precepts of men. We honor him with our mouth, with our lips, but our heart is far from him. And our understanding is through the precepts of men. Study for yourself. Pray for the Ruach. Pray for the Holy Spirit yourself. And turn to him yourself. Come on, brothers and sisters. All right, so uh, basically, I'm going to go to a precept, which they call in the uh, Hebrew community, another uh, command, basically. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. All right, that's out of Isaiah uh, chapter 28, verse 10. I'm going to go to, let's go to Isaiah. Let me type it in. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Isaiah 10, I believe that's where I'm going, right? No, I'm going to Isaiah 2. Sorry about that. Told y'all, brother, brother Mark, brother Macadai. Man, I wear glasses and still can't see. But it's all right. Praise Yahweh for what he has blessed me with. All right. And what he has blessed me with is an understanding of this, of his word. Okay. Praise Yahweh for that. All right, so let, right here, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 2. Let me make it big for you. And we're going to read verse 2 to 4 because it's another prophecy and something we got to have you to understand. So we just read basically in the book of Ezekiel how the Gentiles have to basically, um, you know, cleave to Israel and, and you have to do the law, statutes, and commandments and Sabbaths, okay? And, and another chapter you can go to, I'm not going to bring it out because I just brought that out a few weeks ago. You can go to Isaiah chapter 56 as well uh, and get an understanding. And in, in, in that chapter, Yahweh clearly says that his um, house shall be a house of prayer for all people. Okay, so all are invited, but it's ways that you have to do it. You have to cleave to Israel. All right. Excuse me. I had an air bubble. <clears throat> it won't come out. I don't have my water with me today. So do I have a bottle of water over there? No. All right. So I'm just going to move on. All right, so this is Isaiah 2. Let's read this. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow unto this. So again, like I just brought out, this is Yahweh's mountain. This is Yahweh's kingdom. This is Yahweh's government through Yahshua, Hamashiach, right? And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh to the house of the Elohim of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways 
and we will walk in the past. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah or the instructions and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. And what did we just read? Through Zadok and the priests. That's they're going to magnify the word. They're going to magnify the law. So right here, they, don't he say that we're going to be a kingdom of, of kings and priests? All right. So it's going to be at the mouth of the priests that everybody is going to receive this uh, instructions. Right. So verse four, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into pile shares and their spears into permanent hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. OK. So that's that's all I'm gonna bring out here. And this whole exact thing, is, this whole um, um scripture, this precept is in Makai. Let me go to it real quick. I didn't really want to do it, but let's go to Makai. What is that? Makai chapter four. Let's go to Makai chapter four, and I'm gonna read one and three. All right. It's basically the same thing, but it gets a little bit more in depth here. It says, but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Yahweh shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh and to the house of the Elohim of Jacob, and he shall teach us all his ways and we will walk in his paths for the instruction shall go forth of Zion and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. So the word of Yahweh, we know that's Yeshua HaMashiach. And he shall judge among many people. Yeshua is going to judge and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And, and, and basically, brothers and sisters, we all know that basically uh, a lot of these nations are going to be serving Israel. They're going to be, uh, you know, cultivating the land. They're going to be um, working. You know, they're going to be working. You want to assimilate in the land, you're going to have to work. Okay. Let's go to uh, uh, a precept real quick that I want to go to in Isaiah 49, which we have actually in our description um, on the page for um, a light to the lost sheep of Israel. All right. So we're going to go to verse six. This will give you a, a little bit more understanding. All right. And he said, it is a light thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles that you may be my Yeshua until the end of the earth. So basically through the body of Yeshua, the children of Israel, we are supposed to be a light to the Gentiles, okay? We are, Yeshua is our head and we are the body and he is in heaven. And while we are here still serving Yahweh, serving Yeshua, we have to be a light to his people that are called by his name that are not of the fold. There are people of Gentile nations that are being called by Yahshua's name, Yahweh's name, excuse me. Okay. Now we don't believe, we're not one of those ministries that believe just because we're Israelites that salvation is only for Israel. That is not true. Salvation, are, it will be for other people who want to leave their nation and cleave on to the nation of Israel. That's what it's all about. It's about the adoption of sons, okay? You have to be adopted or, or better yet, grafted in to the nation of Israel, okay? Let's go to uh, let's go to y'all book, the book that y'all love the most, okay? Let's go to the uh, one of one of y'all books, the book of Corinthians. And what chapter am I going to? Chapter six, okay? Let's go to one of Paul's epistles, Elder Paul. You know, Gentiles, we love to uh, read. I mean, we, because I was once a Gentile as well. And I was uh, grafted back into the natural branches. Okay. All right. So do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Do, do you not know that? That the saints, that the children of Israel shall judge the world? And if, if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? See, this is this is in context of um, 1 Corinthians 6. This is about, you know, us as Israelites going to their courts to, dis to, to, to settle our disputes. Because at this time, we are in captivity, okay? And we are in captivity now. So, you know, it's frowned upon for us as Israelites to have a dispute with our brother or sister and have to go to the Gentile court to settle our matter. We're supposed to do that amongst ourselves. 
in our own nation. Okay. And, and I wanted to bring this out just to show you that it is Israel, the nation of Israel, that is going to judge all the world. Okay. We're going to judge the world. All right. All right. So let's, co let's continue moving on because I, I, I still got some stuff I want to bring out. Let's go to the book of Obadiah. Those who don't know, of course, Obadiah is about, you know, the Edomites, prophecy about the Ed Edom. All right, but I want to go down to, I don't want to read this whole thing. Let's go down to verse 15. And unless I'm through the spirit, I'll see how Yahweh want me to bring this out. For the day of Yahweh is near unto, upon all the heathen. Okay. Who is the heathen? That's the nations. The day of Yahweh is near upon all the nations. As you has done, it shall be done unto you. Thy reward shall return upon your own head. Brothers and sisters, if you are from another nation, you got to understand something. The Israelites, the true children of Israel have been completely afflicted here on this on this earth. And Egypt, Assyria, um, Persia, Mede, uh, in the Greek captivity, the Roman captivity, the Arab Muslim slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. I mean, we have, we have really been afflicted, brothers and sisters. And the thing is, You have to pay for that, okay? You have to pay for that. If you don't think that you're going to get recompense for what you have done, you have another thing coming, okay? All right, so let's go to uh, a precept in Revelation 1. All right, Revelation 1, and let me go down to 10. Okay. So, this is what it says, okay, in the book of Revelation. I was in the Ruach on, the, on Yahweh's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Aleph and the Tav, the first and the last. And what you see right in a book and send it to the seven assemblies, which are in the uh, which are in Asia. And so this goes into all the different assemblies here that are scattered throughout Asia. But you know, this I, I just wanted to show you that this is basically a, a precept here, and 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 basically this is how the Ruach Hakodesh works. He said he was in the Ruach in the in, in Yahweh's day. Okay, but um, so just just to give you context, so what happens is he's in the Ruach. Revelation 13 and 10. All right. So he's in a Ruach. So this is what he says in the Ruach HaKodesh. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay. So it's like I said, anything that that any of the nations have done to Israel, it's going to be brought back on to the Gentile nations. OK, if you if you have served um, and, and, and you have afflicted Yahweh's people with rigor, um, servitude, if you have afflicted and punished them, hung them on trees, whipped them um, on that back with whips and, and, and all kinds of things. That's the same thing that happened to Yeshua. He was hung on a tree too. He was whipped. He was scourged. He was beaten as well. Then this have to be, you have to be recompensed for that. And he's going to visit that iniquity on the children. Okay. On your, on the descendants of the slave masters. Okay. You're going to pay for that. Okay. I don't like to dwell on this too much because Yahweh says that vengeance is his. Okay. Vengeance is his. So we don't have to um we don't have to dwell on what's going to happen to to the Edomites and all that. All right. Let's go to Obadiah again 
and let's continue on. I am going to go ahead and continue on. All right. So we have read 15. Let's go ahead and read 16. We're going to go ahead and read it down. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So we're talking about here a prophecy where the children of Israel are going to receive reparations because of all the things that the Gentile nations have done against us, specifically here, the Edomites. OK. Verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Yahweh hath spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain of the Philistines, and they shall possess the field of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath. And the and the captivity of Jerusalem, excuse me, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be Yahweh's. Hallelujah. All right. So we see here that this is a, a last day prophecy. And basically because of all the things that some of these Gentile nations have done, we're gonna possess some of these uh, these nations and they're gonna basically gonna be subject to Israel. So again, we see Gentile salvation through Israel, but also we see subjugation or people that's gonna have to serve Israel because of what their ancestors done, okay? Let's move on. All right. Let me um let me bring out a few verses in Isaiah 60 real quick. I want to show you something. Isaiah 60, 14 and 15. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all that they despise, all that all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, we are hated of all nations, then Yahshua say that we shall be hated of all nations for his name's sake. So that no man went through you. We're so hated that the Gentiles don't even want to come through the real children of Israel. Y'all don't even want to come through us because y'all hate us so much. I will make you an internal excellency, a joy of many generations. You hear that? Thou shall also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shall suck the breasts of kings. And thou shall know that I am Yahweh and thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of, of your code. This don't mean we're going to literally suck milk from these people. What it means is we're going to get what's owed to us because of how bad we've been done by the, the nations and different uh, kings of the of the of the land. OK, that have afflicted us all throughout time. You know, we so quick to, to, to vote for presidents here in the West. But as soon as they get up in there, they don't care about us. Come on. Come on, brothers and sisters. They don't care about us. So why do we put so much of our, our ourselves into their culture? We are afflicted on all fronts. We are oppressed. We are thrown in their prison houses. They do not care about us, brothers and sisters. All right. So let me go. Let me go up, though. Almost something I want to bring out here. This is verse one. I'm going to read down to five. Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon you. He's talking about the Israelites. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. This is sin and iniquity. But Yahweh shall arise upon you and his glory 
shall be seen upon you. That's because we're keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments, his instructions, okay? That's the righteousness, okay? And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all that, that gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then you shall see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto you. So this is the Gentiles being converted unto the, the Israelites, okay? The abundance of the sea, the sea is the people. The sea of people shall be converted unto you. Israel, the forces of the Gentile shall come unto you, okay? All right, so with that said, let's go to Zechariah chapter 14. I got a few more scriptures and I'll soon be done. Zechariah 14, because I want to read what happens when you don't comply in Israel. So, let's go to Zechariah 14, 9. Zechariah 14, 9. And it reads, and Yahweh shall be king over all the earth in that day. Shall there be one Yahweh and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rem Remah, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place. From, Jim from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate and from the tower of Hanilel unto the king's wine presses and men shall dwell in it and there shall be no more utter destruction but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited let me move up and this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from Yahweh shall be among them and they shall lay hold every one of the hand of his neighbor and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. All right. And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from Yahweh shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one of their hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Excuse me, because I think I might have scrolled and messed that up. But OK, let's let's continue on. And Yehuda also shall fight at Jerusalem and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel and in great abundance. So, again, right here we read um, this is the reparations that Israel is supposed to um, acquire. And so shall be the plague of the house of the horse, of the mule, of the camel and of the ass and of all the beasts that shall be in their tents as the plague. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the, the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So you see right here in the kingdom, 
if you don't if you don't keep the feast of tabernacles if you're not keeping the commandments you're not going to get any rain okay there shall be the punishment of egypt and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to the king of the king the, to keep the feast of tabernacles excuse me this shall be the punishment of egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles and that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto Yahweh and the pots of Yahweh of Yahweh's house shall be like the bowels, the bowls before the altar. Okay. Yet every pot in Jerusalem and in Yehuda shall be holiness unto Yahweh of hosts and all that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of Yahweh of hosts. All right. So there you see it. If you don't, if you don't keep the instruction of Yahweh, you ain't going to get no rain in the land. And as you see, Gentile salvation is through Israel. Uh, what, what more must we really show? Um, other than, you know, you have to assimilate into you know, the ways of Israel. You have to. All right. A few other um, scriptures I wanted to bring out. Um, let's see. Let me let me turn to it right here in my book. That way I can just read it to you. I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 45, just so you can get an understanding. Isaiah chapter 45 and 25. And Yahweh shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. So again, Gentiles, you have to uh, assimilate into Israel. You have to be grafted in. But it's Yahweh who shall justify us from keeping his instructions. Okay. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you know, uh, Elder Shaul said that no flesh shall be justified by the, by the uh, Torah, by the law. Okay. Let's go to Galatians let me turn to Galatians. Let me remove that. I'm going to turn to Galatians real quick. <clears throat> Let's go to Galatians 2 and 16. Galatians 2 and 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yeshua HaMashiach, even we have believed in Yeshua HaMashiach that we might be justified by the faith of Mashiach and not by the works of the instructions, but by the works of the Torah shall no flesh be justified. We know that. I explained that last week for y'all who uh, missed it. It's not the actual uh, Torah itself just by, uh, you know, adhering to the Torah. That's not going to do it. You have to believe and do it. OK, you have to believe and do it. And in the last understanding here, I'm going to go to James. Let me go to James chapter 2 and 21. Pay attention to this. James chapter 2 and 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? And then uh, 24 reads, you see how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only? So that's, again, you have to have faith and you have to do the instructions. You have to do both, okay? So... For all you uh, Gentiles and people who don't believe that you uh, have to keep the instruction of Yahweh, we brought it out right there. You have to keep the instruction of Yahweh. You have to keep his feasts, just like we brought out in Zechariah. If you don't keep his feasts, you won't get any rain. You have to do what thus saith Yahweh, and you have to have faith in him and his Mashiach. With that said, I want to give all praise and honor to the almighty Yahweh in the name of his only begotten son, Yeshua HaMashiach, the light of the world, and our soon coming king, redeemer, and deliverer. Yah willing. I'll see y'all again next week. Turn to Yahweh, keep faith, and do his instructions. Hallelujah.